how much autonomy will Dylan have by way of comparison to Bo, because Bo had probably as much as any quarterback in the country. So does he have the same level of on-field freedom, control, et cetera? Yeah, we build our system around the quarterback and give him that freedom at the line of scrimmage. So Dylan, Dante, Austin, Brock, Luke, Ryder Hayes, everybody's taught the exact same and with the exact same checks. And uh, we anticipate that to, to remain consistent in this next season too. Dan told us yesterday that Dylan and Dante really just jumped in as far as preparation goes this offseason. What have you seen from them so far? Yeah, I mean, they're they're professionals, you know, they take it serious, just like Austin does. And, you know, Luke's learning that same way, but, you know, Dylan's a veteran guy, you know, just like how Bo came in here with a lot of experience. Dylan has that same experience. Dante had experience last year um, at UCLA playing the games. Austin is so much farther ahead now than what he was at this point last year because he knows the system. So, you know, everybody's doing a really good job of preparing themselves for walkthroughs and in the spring practice and really excited about their development so far. What's the back and forth with the quarterbacks? About having talked about you and Bo kind of building out the offense, finding a fit and the same kind of approach this year with maybe out of third start. Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking to improve myself. And these guys are exceptional football players and they're extremely intelligent when it comes to the game. I mean, guys nowadays are so much further ahead than what they were when he and I played. So I'm always looking to build scheme. I'm obviously, you know, Dante played for a pretty good guy last year that we all know, you know, was a really good offensive coach. They might have stuff that I wanted to know that now I can learn. Same with Dylan, with Jeff Levy. So like, I'm trying to improve myself and trying to, what's the best thing that we could do for our offense and you know you're gonna see a lot of similar but there's gonna be some tweaks and build it around the quarterbacks and what they do well and and, and kind of go on from there so that dylan brought several of the skill guys now to socal with 3d qb didn't know if that was one of the official dime time retreats or if there's some of those coming up here i don't think it was the official dime time retreat yeah. but um yeah he, he he works out with those guys and, and they do a great job with him and as well as other quarterbacks around the country so yeah i think it was just a uh a time to fellowship, to bond with, with, with some guys on the team, and that'll continue, you know, throughout his time here at Oregon. What's impressed you most about Dante since he's been here? Um, I just think his his personality. I mean, he's an extremely humble kid. Um, you know, he's from Michigan as well as my wife, so there's some common, you know, some common ground with me and him in terms of where he's from, Midwest. I don't know if you consider Louisville Midwest, but that's where I'm from. So um, he's just a great dude, and he's all about work and all about improvement. And, you know, really excited about where he's at right now. So, I know it's early in the process, but where do you see Jay Harris fitting into the offense next year? Yeah, Jay's a very talented player. And today, I think he took took another step forward compared to where he was in, in practice one. We practice at a different speed, a different tempo. What Dan sets in terms of his expectations, what it's supposed to look like. Newcomers sometimes just got to, like, figure it out. So day one, he was figuring out a little bit, but you saw today, like his ability to stretch the field vertically in the pass game. He's 6'2", 215 pounds. He runs extremely well, and, and he's a tough kid from humble beginnings and um, really excited about Jay. It's a lot of production to replace with Bo and Troy and Bucky and guys like that leaving. How have you kind of seen that take, you know, take form in the locker room? Is there a bigger sense of competition among players this spring? There's always competition here. I mean, we think we have one of the best rosters in the country and our skilled players. Yeah, we lost Troy, but I, mean, I believe in Treshawn Holden. I believe in Gary Bryant. Tess Johnson is one of the best players in the country. Terrence Ferguson, we need to, I need to get him the ball more. You know, he's a fantastic receiver too. Um, you know, Bucky had 56 catches last year, 53, you know, so we expect Noah Whittington to be healthy for this season, to be a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. So. Yeah, there is some production to be replaced, but I feel confident with the guys that we have. You know, Jurion stepping up. You know, some of these young receivers, you're, you're able to see them in practice make plays down the field. So it's exciting times. Kenyon Sadiq's had a great camp so far in just two practices. So he's another guy that's a matchup nightmare with his speed in the slot and can line him up all over the field. So it's a uh, it'll be it'll be fun for me this year to try to get everybody the ball. You know, so it's a it's a good problem to have. You mentioned some of the freshmen, Will, and a lot of teams, generally speaking, don't rely on freshmen at skills positions for, for obvious reasons, usually out of necessity. But highly touted guys, if Stan always says, if you're good enough, you're all done. So what makes a guy ready for guys who either you've coached, like DuVernay back in the day, or guys that you played with, Eli and Devontae Parker, who that was maybe a little bit of necessity, but they showed they were ready. What 
what do you need to see over the course of spring to make you feel like one of these freshmen is going to be ready over there? Knowing what to do. I mean, we carry a lot in our offense, especially in the past game. So we do it out of a lot of different formations. So being able to line up and go execute is the biggest thing. They all have the talent. But as we know, like play strength is different too. Like you're going against a Tai Sheen that's a fifth year guy that's, you know, a grown man and you're trying to, to become a grown man as a young receiver. So the physicality of the game is different. Um, and then, you know, it's necessity too. We have a pretty veteran group in that room that's played a lot of football and, you know, they're going to be the ones more often than not contributing for us early on in the season. But can we build the confidence of the, you know, those young guys through the spring camp, through summer install, through fall camp? to where they're ready to go in and produce um, because we don't want to put anybody out on the field. It's like Jerry on last year. He wasn't ready. I mean, he's a phenomenal player. He's ready now, you know, but it takes time. And when guys can succumb to the process and understand that it doesn't happen overnight, take a deep breath and realize that, like, I'm at a great place, the best way to play college football in the country, and then I can grow and develop. Then when their time comes, they're ready to play, and there's no mistakes. What do you play? Play like that. Work between two different meeting rooms, or is he just with the tight he's ends? with tight ends? Yeah, okay. he's with tight ends. But um, you know, Coach Manager does as good a job as anybody, holistically teaching their offense to where, if you told Kenyon to go play X, he'd go run the rock because he knows the concept. Um, if you put him in the backfield to pass protect, he knows our protection in six man pro. So you know, we cross train guys. We we teach the entirety of the offense to every player. Um, but yeah, Kenyon is. You know, we really believe we got a, a special player there. Going back to Jurion, I mean, he wasn't, you know, he was still getting healthy last year. What right. have you seen from this spring and, you know, how, what is it about him that makes him that special player? He knows what to player? do. He knows where to line up. And when you know what to do and know where to line up, you can play fast and play to your ability. When you're scattered, you know, you don't know where to line up. What is that signal looking for help? You can't play at full speed because you don't know what route to run. And that has nothing to do with his intelligence. Jurion is an extremely intelligent guy. It's just new, you know? So now he's at a point, he gets lined up like that, he runs his route, and now he looks like the player that we all anticipated he would look like. And he's in shape, and he's healthy. So I love that kid. He has worked his tail off to get in good shape, to go out and produce for us, and the sky's the limit for Jurion, as we all know. What, what does the next step look like for Jurion? And you guys obviously have a very deep receiver room. What does he need to do to kind of earn consistent playing time this year? Just keep competing. I mean, when the ball's up in the air, go make the play. You know, I, I think that's a – he's a big-body receiver. Our, our one-on-one contested catches, we expect him to go catch the ball. You know, I don't – it shouldn't be a 50-50 with him. He should go make the play, and that's what he's shown. He really took a big step in bowl prep because it was like another 13 practices of spring football. We're going over base install <laughs> again. And you saw those down-the-field routes develop with him and him, you know, like some other, you know, you know like, like a Troy or like a Fur. Like he's taking the, the ball off the defender's heads. Not to look past any competitions with the ones in the offensive line mode, but with replacing Jackson's hard, but Pacho already started the festival. But how much of spring is about developing the two's cohesion and having answers because it starts to impact recruiting plans for the 25 class, that position where you're going to lose more than two starters to right. this group next year. So if you're going to have to place potentially all five, how much of this spring is planting the seeds for the next group to it's have huge. a, not just all we feel good about, Six, seven, eight, nine, but like you need to know. No doubt. And O line's a developmental position, you know. So some of these young guys, you know, we're starting to see their development, you know, come to light. And, you know, as you guys know, we two spot a lot, right? There's there's uh, different O line groups. So we're able to see a younger kid next to a Josh Connolly or a younger player next to a Marcus Harper. Um, and really, those older guys, those vets have done a great job of elevating the play of the younger guys. But it is critical. This is a big spring for some of these young guys to really see where they're at and then project them to the future uh, for us because we will be losing a lot after this next season. You talked about the process of getting Jerry on up to speed and getting him ready for games last year. How is going through that last year, how has that helped you this year in terms of getting this year's receiving class and the young guys up to speed and getting them ready to be able to make an impact this season? We have so much help, man. Like we got a ton of support staff. Um, you know, we got a lot of a lot of guys that can pour into these kids on and off the field. Um, and, you know, Coach Coach Adams does a phenomenal job of development at that position. You know, look at his track record. He's developed some of the best receivers in the country. So, um, you know, with June's help, with, with the entire offense, with our GAs, 
Like these kids get a lot of a lot of extra time to to really learn the system, and then we get a ton of reps. I mean, we, we practice, and these kids get a lot of reps at the same plays. Repetition creates confidence, and you know when they're confident, they're gonna play well. Thank you, Coach.